Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And please subscribe to this podcast uh, so you can be notified of new episodes. And if you'd like to support this free service, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. The links on my website, as is, or 1500 of my recordings from the various uh, uh, podcasts and things that I've done since 2006. There's quite a few things to listen to. Now, I'm going to talk today about prejudice. Now, this might not be the correct word. It's probably better words to um, use, but I'll start with the word prejudice and see what comes, you know, later on in, in the recording, you know, see if something is a little bit more suitable for what I'm talking about. So I'll start off basically with a diagnosis. Let's say you've had a diagnosis of maybe it's depression, uh, maybe it's anxiety disorder, general anxiety disorder, stress, panic disorder, maybe bipolar, personality disorder, emotionally unstable personality disorder or something like that. Um, all these things can include stress, anxiety and panic. They can all be, you know, part of that. Obviously, you know, general anxiety disorder would be specifically aimed at that. But, I mean, in my life, I've been, I've been, God, I've been uh, diagnosed with quite a few different things on the mental health scale. I think 2000, no, 1995 it was depression, no, 1995 it was stress, 1997 it was depression, and I think 19, yeah, 2000 or 2001 recurring depression disorder or something. And then in 2002 or 2003, yeah, we've got it, uh, 2002, it was uh, anxiety disorder. Then I think they decided it was general anxiety disorder, GAD. And then in 2000 and Three, I think depression diagnosed with that again recurring depression and then in 2006 uh, I was diagnosed with depression again this is from the GP um, the doctor and then 2000 so depression a few times through the years 2011 diagnosed with bipolar disorder and then I was also, I kind of ignored it, if I'm honest, because I didn't want to, I didn't didn't like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if anyone likes it, do they? But I didn't like it, didn't. I was working, I was self-employed, I was a counsellor. I did not want that hanging over my head. So I took some medication, didn't like how it made me feel. So I stopped and I just can continued working, which was the wrong thing to do because I got ill, or iller actually. 
so 2013 I think it was went back to the psychiatrist and they re-diagnosed me with bipolar like again um, but this time also with emotionally unstable personality disorder now the reason I'm telling you this is because the diagnosis itself can cause other people in my experience it might not be the same with you but I do go on to a lot of the forums uh, groups on Facebook and a lot of people do say the same thing that they're treated differently once they've been diagnosed which according to one of the psychologists that I've seen is part of the reason why they don't like to diagnose people with such um, conditions like bipolar or something that has a fairly negative connotation in public life what I mean by that is how often do you see a newspaper article where they mention that the person's got bipolar and it's a positive article you know, a man saves family from a burning building and uh, he has bipolar or anxiety disorder they don't mention that but if something bad happens then they'll mention oh and he's got bipolar you know this isn't about bipolar this recording I'm just saying as an example so the prejudice I suppose what I wanted to talk about is how do you deal with the prejudice have you experienced prejudice is prejudice the right word and I guess also maybe you have and you felt you was the only one maybe you didn't realize other people also had that experience and it might be useful to know that and also it might be useful to get your head around the fact that that's other people's problems if they have an issue with you and why should you be you know why should you take that crap from them if they've got an issue with your illness then that's their problem that's that's their stuff isn't it ultimately if you went and told someone that you had diabetes they wouldn't be saying oh that explains your behavior that explains why you are the way you are and then every time you do something in the future oh, it must be the diabetes and I think that's quite a crappy way to treat people personally you know to to judge them we judge people we judge each other that's normal it's a human thing anyone that says that they don't judge others is lying because we all judge maybe not in a cruel way though maybe not in a spiteful harmful way but always we judge, we make judgments. That's how we function in life. We judge whether something is safe. We judge whether someone is worth talking to. We make judgments, that's how we function. And we're human beings and we judge. But there are some people that really judge, like proper, full on. And I yeah my suggestion and I, for me I kind of don't want to be like that and I like to notice my judgments and say like, okay well is it true in the same way as I say in previous recordings when you have something that you say to yourself and it's harmful or unkind is it true it's in the same way we could do that about judging others is it true that that person always does this thing you know because 
generalizing is also another way to function. Now we kind of, our minds, we have to group things, don't we? It makes it easier. Otherwise, I think it would be harder if we didn't generalize. But it's noticing what we generalize in. So it's kind of just, I guess it's just a case of noticing how we're thinking, questioning it, not just accepting every thought that goes into our mind or that comes out of our mind. But this isn't about stopping judging other people. This is about us being judged. It's about dealing with other people other people's prejudices maybe again I want a better word than that prejudice it seems a bit harsh but I suppose um, stigma the stigma of a mental illness so st to stigmatise something to I don't know, whatever word you want to use, I think it's about the, the feeling that goes with it. Now, I remember when I, in 2011, well, pretty much all the way up to, all the way through my adult life, I never told really any of my family about what I'd been gone through. You know, any of the depression, stress, anxiety, none of that. I didn't really open up about any of that stuff to them. So I put on a, a brave, not a brave face, but I just, I kind of almost left, left that behind uh, when I left my town. I kind of just left it there and sort of just didn't discuss it because I didn't really feel that they were in, would be interested, so I didn't tell anyone. And then in 2011, December, when I was diagnosed with bipolar, it seemed such quite a big thing. It was almost too big for me to not talk about it. I don't know if that makes sense. It was something that I needed to tell people. Not everyone, I wasn't walking around to people in the street and saying, guess what? I know you don't know me, but I'm a bipolar person. You know, just people that I knew. A friend said to me, what do you feel like now that you've been diagnosed with bipolar? I remember saying, I don't know, I'm up, I'm down, you know, changing, a bit changeable about it. And uh, just, it, the diagnosis is different, but the symptoms are still the same. That's the thing, isn't it? When you get diagnosed with something, nothing's changed. The symptoms don't change. So with anxiety, you get diagnosed with, uh, well, basically they're just telling you what you kind of already know, maybe, but they're giving it a label and some people don't like the labels. Some doctors don't like the labels. Some psychiatrists and psychologists do not like those labels because they know about the stigma or the prejudice that the person may get. But without the label, that person can't perhaps get the help that they need So it's kind of a, a double-edged uh, situation. I couldn't get psychology. I couldn't get see a psychologist. I saw a psycho psychotherapist for a, over a year. And I've been seeing, I saw a psychologist for over a year as well. I wouldn't have got any of that if I didn't have the label. The bipolar and the uh, personality disorder. Which is two things that quite they do go together sometimes, co, 
co-comordant or something. There's a name for it. Um, but I wouldn't have got any of that help. I would have got the medication. Because doctors will prescribe medication for moods, to help the mood, you know. They'll give bipolar medication without actually diagnosing the person. A psychiatrist rather, you know, because doctors can't diagnose mental illnesses. Other than maybe they can diagnose depression, but, uh, but they can't diagnose things like bipolar. It has to be a psychiatrist. Maybe a psychologist as well. In, that's in England anyway, so I don't know what it's like in other countries. So, prejudice, prejudice, prejudice. When I told my dad, I'm not, I'm not picking on my dad. So I'll just say, when I told him and his wife, um, I felt something changed. I, 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 and that could have just been me. But I felt almost like I was no longer me to them. I was an illness. That's how I felt. And I still feel that, actually, if I'm honest. It's... I've always been weird, I suppose. It'd probably be... It's probably not nice to call myself weird, especially as I'm telling people not to be not to be nice to themselves and not to say horrible things to themselves. However, in the general scheme of things, as far as society's norms, I don't fit in with that. I never have. I've been okay with that. I just maybe just I don't know maybe. Who knows? Maybe it is because of the bipolar, because of that. That's just uh, I am how I am because of that, maybe, or because of what's happened. We're all individuals. We're all different. But I think that unusual behaviour, which has been noticeable since I was a kid, now suddenly made sense to some people. And I don't know, it was the idea that, you know, everything can be explained by someone's illness, their behavior. Oh, it must be their illness or their condition instead of their personality. To me, seems like a shame that that it's almost. I felt almost like my personality had been taken away from me. I was no longer a person with a personality. I was just this condition, and it didn't feel very nice. And I still feel that sometimes. I still feel that with some situations and people I felt that way when because I was at the Buddhist centre at the time when I got diagnosed and some people would t they were treating me differently not unkindly but kind of different maybe you know the old saying with kid gloves treat me a bit more gently which I didn't need Almost, I'm not tiptoeing around me, but just, you know, I didn't, you can sense it, can't you, a little bit? And maybe, well, not maybe, I can be over, a bit oversensitive at times. So maybe I was reading more into it than what there was. So I suppose my question is, have you experienced these kind of things yourself? But then how much of it is real? In a sense that I'm thinking, well, this is what I'm perceiving. 
that they're treating me this way because of the bipolar. To be fair, I don't even mention about the personality disorder to most people. I just say bipolar. <laughs> I just don't need the the extra. Um, I don't want the extra judgment. To be fair, you know. And so I just, if people want to know my situation, I say bipolar. I mean, I've got a friend who said that, you know, don't tell people, you know, quick, sort of online when I'm doing this stuff. But, and he was coming from a, a kind place because he knows that online you can get trolls, you can get people being really cruel. I would hope that I wouldn't get that in this kind of forum, you know, doing a recording aimed at helping people in a similar situation as myself with the stress, anxiety, um, mental illness, mental ill health. But I talk about it on other podcasts as well because I don't class it as being something that I should be ashamed of. Just in the same way as if I had to use a wheelchair, I'm not comparing my situation with being in a wheelchair. I'm just saying if I had to use a wheelchair to get around, then I would use a wheelchair. I wouldn't stay at home ashamed. I wouldn't like it. But knowing me, I'd probably make it into a joke and have fun with it. Just and start banging into people and stuff, I don't know. Asking people to help me across the road. Just to sort of break my way into it and sort of... Just knowing how I am, that's possibly what I would do. But who knows, in a situation, I might not do that. I might hide, my, I might hide away. When my nan had to... She was, had broken a hip twice. The second time she broke her hip, she could hardly move. And they got her a wheelchair to push her around in. And she hated it. And she was in her 90s and she absolutely hated the wheelchair. Didn't want to go out in it. Didn't want to be seen in it. And we're all different, aren't we? So I couldn't understand it. I could like, well, you're in the wheelchair. First of all, you're very elderly. I didn't say that to her, but no one's gonna even notice because most people in their late 90s possibly gonna be in a wheelchair or like a, you know, some kind of sitting device being pushed along. And she was in a town full of elderly people. But, you know, in her mind, she just, no, so maybe she had experienced prejudice, you know, from other people towards people in wheelchairs in her life, and she didn't want to have that aimed at her. Maybe it was just her perception. You know, now that she's in a wheelchair, she's, she's old. When, when she could walk, she didn't feel old. I don't know if I'm saying should we embrace our uh, I don't use the word illnesses but you know embrace both aspects embrace the things we can't change because if someone's if someone's in a wheelchair and they've got maybe they're paralysed from the waist down we can't change that at the moment medical technology may you know I hope in my, I mean it already is starting to do that so in my lifetime I think we're going to see the next 20-30 years major major changes in physical health on a, a scale that I just can't even imagine so that's really exciting but at the moment someone's in a wheelchair then embrace it and it's easy for me to say that because I'm not in a wheelchair 
but I'm not talking about wheelchairs, I'm talking about any condition. Is it possible though? That's what I'm asking. I'm not saying do it, but is it possible to do it? Is it possible to, I want to say embrace, I don't mean wear it around, you know, you wear it like a badge of honour. But you know, I've got the weird, my mentality is this, if I, if I saved, saved someone's life, so I run into a burning building, saved someone's life and ended up with a burn, a burn arm. I probably wouldn't hide that arm. I wouldn't, wouldn't cover it up, you know, in future years once it's healed up and stuff. But it would be a big scar on the arm. In some ways, for me, I'd kind of want to be reminded of it, that there's someone alive now because of that scar. That's, you know, someone's alive that wouldn't be alive. And that's an amazing thing. And every day looking at that scar would remind me of that. I like to think it would, it might not, but I'm not hugely vain. You can't, I mean, I've got, I've got a, a face for radio, you know? I'm not, I wasn't, I, I don't know. Is it possible to embrace our, what do you want to call it? I don't want to say the word defects illnesses, that doesn't seem like the right word, our, the things that we're not so pleased about, our, well, it's not even a negative part either, is it? Having a mental disorder isn't, is not negative, it's what is. It's not pleasant either, obviously, but it's, can we embrace it as in Accept it, I guess. That's the, probably a better word, isn't it? Accepting in an embracing kind of way without judging ourselves. Because we can't stop other people judging. But we can kind of give ourselves a little talking to so that we don't judge ourselves. And when you don't judge yourself for maybe a mental health issue, you're not probably going to be judging other people on their mental health issues either. Which means if everybody with a mental health issue, be it bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, stress, anxiety, you know, the, the list is fairly long, but you know, whatever the condition, if everybody who had a mental health issue didn't judge, stop, stop judging themselves, which meant that they wouldn't be able to judge other people because it just wouldn't be in them anymore. That's a, quite a few people not judging others and not, ju not judging each other regarding the health side of things. You know, it's, I mean, it's so easy to say, oh, I don't judge anyone, but you know what? If I turned up to meet my dad in the cafe, and I said, oh, he says, meet me at one o'clock, so I do, and I turn up, and he's got bright pink hair, and uh, he's, you know, I'm gonna, I don't know if the, the word judge is correct, but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna judge him. There's gonna be part of me that won't wanna sit with him. <laughs> and that's just naturally there because, well, I'll probably be so confused about what's going on because this is the last thing that my dad would ever do. It's like, you know, so we do judge, but I guess it's noticing. 
But back to prejudice, back to prejudice. I think a lot of people that maybe, this is just an assumption of mine, that are prejudiced against people who have mental health issues would be someone that's never had mental health issues. Or, I remember years ago, another, obviously another really, really serious mental health issue, um, uh, something like an eating disorder, um, OCD, those things, they're really, so I'm not, I can't mention every single one because they all they all include they all can include stress and anxiety within them it could be a part of it a dynamic of it so to just sort of think well it's just stress no or someone's you know the only people with stress are people that have been diagnosed with a stress disorder well no obviously not it's I would say everybody, even those that don't admit it, have felt extreme stress at some point in their life. I mean, how could you get through childhood without, without not having, you know, catastrophized about something, thinking it was the end of the world, thinking of that person, um, you know, being so scared that your parents will find out something you did at school thinking that they were going to actually kill you when that was never going to happen. But, you know, you were absolutely terrified for maybe two or three days. We've all been through those kinds of things. It's going to be different for everyone. And I'm not talking about extreme childhood issues, you know, bad stuff. I'm just saying, as an average child, we would have experienced extreme stress but not giving it a label because we weren't aware of what stress was when we were children little children in fact I'd say lots of adults aren't aware of what stress is because they don't connect it with the word stress a lot of people that I've spoken to over the years class stress as something that weak people have. Depression is weak-minded people get depressed. That's what how some people think, which blows my mind, the idea that someone could be so unkind, actually, so dismissive of an illness. Yeah, if it's a physical illness, they'll be all over it. Be really kind of caring and kind and considerate and loving if it's a physical illness. Mental illness, that's some people, whether it's the way they're being brought up, whether it's the society they live in, whether it's the kind of job they do. Some people I've met in, in the forces, you know, sort of in the army or something, have a can sometimes have a mentality where you, you can't show weakness. They've been taught not to show weakness. So they, they class it as a sign of weakness if you're, if someone's, if they're feeling ill or stressed or got post-traumatic stress disorder. And, which is probably part of the reason why there's so much problems with veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety, depression, because they didn't, they weren't taught how to deal with it in the army, because they were taught not to have it. They were taught to work, you know, c carry on through it, which kind of does make sense, you know, on the battlefield. I mean, there's, that's no place to have an anxiety attack is it because that could be the end of your life could be the end of your companion you know people your 
so other soldiers that you're on the, f the field with. The field, you know. So you're basically putting yourself at risk and other people if you was to have a panic attack on the battlefield. So I do understand the concept of like working through it and just, well not working through it, but just ignoring it and carrying on regardless in that scenario. You know, if a, if a, a lion was chasing you, it's not the time to start having a panic attack. That's the time to take action. I don't know what the action is, to be fair. Because I think if you run, they'll go get you. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what the, the correct thing is. I'm hoping I'll never have to deal with that. I don't have many lions around here. Lots of liars, but not many lions. So... Some people, depending on where they're brought up, what kind of life they live, could have a huge effect on whether or not they are judge or are prejudiced against people with mental illness or mental ill health. I remember years ago I was in Butlins and there was a friend of mine, but I got on quite well with him. I didn't know him that well, but I was drinking with him and I was working with him, so... And he said he um, it's what I said about a celebrity that I liked, and he said oh, I hate her because she's bulimic. I said that's a bit harsh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like uh, you hate someone because they're ill. He said my sister was bulimic and she died. So there's no logic in what he said. It's no logic. Yeah, basically his sister was ill and she died which is probably one of the worst things that ever happened in his life or will ever happen in his life because he, he was close to her but at the same time to hate other people that have that illness there's no logic there but it's emotion isn't it and emotion and logic they don't they not don't make great dancing partners. So the pre prejudice can come from people that have actually experienced it. So I'm ga I'm sure there's lots of people out there that are prejudiced against themselves that think actually that stress and anxiety is for weak people even though they may be experiencing stress and anxiety, so they class themselves as weak. But even though they know that's not the case, logically, or maybe they don't, maybe they can't grasp it. But if they're thinking of themselves as being weak, then there's a good chance they're still thinking that way towards other people. So it's, I suppose it could be a similar thing to people that are, um, that would go to, uh, what was it, G gay conversion therapy, because they, even though they're gay, they can't um, accept that they're gay, and they want to be converted back to normal or whatever it is they class as normal, because they can't accept themselves for who they are or they struggle into it I think everyone can eventually accept themselves I think we just, we don't we don't we deserve to be able to accept ourselves isn't that something that we all deserve really to better give ourselves a break just say come on a little bit of love, a little bit of self-love. That's just what I think, you know, the prisons are full of people, full of people that are forgiving themselves. And a lot of those people have done some pretty horrible things, but they're forgiving themselves for it. 
I'm not saying that everyone in prison has forgiven themselves, but a lot of them have. There's a lot that don't even feel guilty, I'm sure. There's probably quite a few, quite a lot that actually aren't guilty as well. They've been wrongly accused and wrongly imprisoned, but that's a completely different subject that I know nothing about really, other than what I read. Mind you, I think nearly every thief, how many thieves actually admit to it? <laughs> you know, it's like, I'd love to see it just one day, it's like, oh, yeah, it was me, I did it. Just one, just admit, just, how many people actually admit to the crimes they do? It's got to be a very small percentage. So, if someone in prison who's done perhaps the most horrific thing that you can imagine is able to forgive themselves, is able to accept themselves, which is really more what we're looking at rather than forgiveness, because if you forgive yourself, then you accept yourself. Then can't those of us that haven't done any of that of those horrible things and I'm not judging anyone that has because I'm just saying that those majority of people haven't done horrific things so how about a bit of self acceptance a bit of you know taking it a little bit easy on ourselves chilling out a little bit you know what I'm not too bad really I'm kind of okay most people haven't killed anyone most people haven't hurt anyone really badly we're all alive otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear this if you weren't if you weren't alive and the, we've all messed up every single one of us has messed up to various degrees So maybe we can, you know, just take a little bit of little bit of time to relax and actually make sure that there's no prejudice in your mind towards yourself. And if there is anything there that maybe you didn't realize before, Get it out. Evict it. It's eviction day for that prejudice towards yourself. Eviction day. And I'm talking instantly. No three months eviction notice. No notice at all. Bye bye. Out you go. No time to pack your bags. It's leaving your home now. It's leaving your mind now. There's no room in your mind for prejudice against yourself. No room for hatred towards yourself. There's no room for that. Eviction time. Go. It has to leave. Straight away. No time to judge yourself. There's no... That's not what life's about. I don't know what life is about necessarily, but I know it's not about that. It's not about being cruel to ourselves. That's not what life's about. So I suppose when I started this, I was talking about prejudice in a sense of how other people maybe treat us differently. Maybe you've felt, you felt that you've been treated differently since you've uh, told other people about your condition. One of the things, one of the things that I've noticed is due to the social anxiety and me not really uh, perhaps cancelling, that's it. Uh, there was a particular friend and... I used to phone her when I was in town to see if she was around. But then what she wanted to do was phone me and book 
a slot, you know, in her day to meet her in town at a specific time, on a specific day. So I used to make appointments, and I make appointments, I used to say, yeah, okay. And then, on a few occasions, I'd cancel. I wouldn't just not turn up, I would phone her or text her and say, I can't make it tomorrow. If I could do it, I'd, I'd cancel a day before, or even a couple of days before, but sometimes it was on the actual day. But I wouldn't just leave her waiting for me. And she, yeah, she sent me a horrible text message, really vicious, having a go at me and saying I should make the effort and not be so lazy or something like that. <laughs> And it's not laziness, I'm not a lazy person. And this is someone who's also got mental health issues as well. And I was I was almost surprised. I guess I was shocked actually. So that I don't know if it's prejudices, that's probably not the right word for that situation or that scenario. More a lack of, well, dismissive. I guess it's a dismissive situation. She was dismissing how I felt. And maybe I was dismissing how she felt as well. Because uh, I suppose maybe she valued me and me but I couldn't face meeting her. And I had to look after myself. Because if I don't do it, who is? So, I had similar things with my family. You know, I just, uh, I don't like traveling, I'll be honest, I don't like the traveling bit. And because I don't live near any family. So I live in the middle of nowhere as well, which is, it's okay, but it's uh, not ideal, especially if you haven't, I don't have a car and my private jet is, uh, is in the garage being fixed, so I can't, you know, I can't get about so much. But I've noticed the more I have cancelled with people, the more they just stop wanting to meet. And I do understand it. I do get it. But it's kind of happened with over the last five years. It's pretty much happened with nearly everybody that I used to meet up with. They just stopped contacting me. So, you know, it's, I mean, maybe that's a completely different subject from what I was talking about, but being treated differently, but maybe I'm just being treated the same way as I would do if I just cancelled on people anyway, maybe, I don't know. So it's more of a question really, I suppose, this, this recording. More of a question. Do you feel that you've had, do you feel you've been treated differently since um, either your diagnosis or the illness? Of stress, anxiety, panic, or any other uh, condition that you may be dealing with? And do you feel, how do you feel about yourself and about your condition? And do you judge yourself? Are you prejudiced against yourself? And if the answer to that is yes, eviction, evict that feeling now. No messing around, evict it, it has to go. 
it's not allowed in your in your brain or your mind it's just harmful it's a poison it is a poison it needs to be gone you deserve more than that so I'm going to leave you on that note so if there is any kind of prejudice and by prejudice I'm thinking like what I said earlier if if you're thinking to yourself that like I'm weak I'm weak because I'm depressed therefore I'm weak or only weak people get stressed therefore I must be weak you need to let that go because it's not true so that needs to be evicted from your mind evict so I'm going to have that under the word prejudice I'm still going to stick to the word prejudice yeah it might not be the right word but I don't care it's well I do care but I hope you're okay with it it might be a better word but prejudice is you know it can cover all things couldn't it hatred um, fear disgust distrust you know can lots of different things um, judgment and everything so yeah doesn't mean all of those things necessarily but it could mean some of those things so if you have anything in your mind where you're thinking that you're not like you're not a whole person because of this because somehow you're you're weak because you have this uh, illness or this disability this stress anxiety or whatever the mental health condition may be if you have that in your mind that that's a weakness or that you're you know if you find yourself dismissing your own feelings evict it evict the prejudice instantly this is almost like dismissing the dismission and that probably doesn't make sense but I don't think dismission is an actual word is it so you're dismissing a part of you that's dismissing your illness or your condition But you're doing more than just dismissing it. You're evicting it from your mind. Evict it from your mind and your body. Let it go. Make it go. And that has to be a must. Not a choice. Well, it is. everything, Everything you do is a choice, obviously. But that's a must. That's something that needs to be done. You need to evict any prejudice you have towards yourself. Because being ill, having a disability, whether it's physical or mental, illness, whether it's physical or mental, is not a weakness. It just means that you're a human being. It means that you're human. So I'm going to go now. Thank you for listening and I shall speak to you next time. So in the meantime, remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Do something special today. Something special that you enjoy doing. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.